Hello and welcome to the Red Men TV. A little bit of a different newsroom this week. Um, I'm joined by Les Wright of the 23 Foundation, ambassador for the 23 yeah. Foundation, Michael Epic, uh, head of the 23 Foundation, Ian Byrne from Fan Support and Food Banks, amongst other things. Um, it's something that is very close to a lot of people's hearts in Liverpool. I think it's very important sometimes that we recognise what people in the community are doing. These three gentlemen are fantastic stalwarts of that. Um, Les, we've cultivated the relationship over the last 18 months, a year. We've done quite a few things together, similarly, and yeah, yeah. my first time meeting you, mate. But So I really wanted to to, to get to the crux of, of what it is that both organisations do. Mike, so maybe start with you, 23 yeah. Foundation. What What is it that you're doing for the community? Well, we, we support sick kids. We support um, many children in the area that, that may, may be from a disadvantaged background. Um, Jamie's very passionate about um, giving local kids a chance, which, hence the, the you know the, the, the charity sort of um, inception ten years ago when J you know when Jamie uh, uh, finished finished playing and, and he had his testimonial. So he, he invested a lot of money um, you know in the communities. Um, so we, we work with the Community Foundation for Merseyside. They've got a lump sum of, of cash there that is allocated to hospitals, schools, etc., etc. Um, and uh, I, I, sort of, I, I run the, the, the sort of marketing side of ELSA on the website um, and uh, as things stand today um, we, we get some, something like a hundred emails a day from people all over the world needing help, needing help and support um, and it could be from Canada to Cheltenham to Liverpool, Manchester, Bradford, whatever and you know we do support uh, kids all over the world now and the way we, we finance that is basically by selling authentic memorabilia signed by Jamie Carragher, Stephen Gerrard, Javi Alonso, uh, even James Milner, uh, John Henderson. Um, we've got great relations with the LFC Foundation and we reciprocate you know, with them. And we work with, 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 with great people like this, you know, in terms of you know, the food banks, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, a, it's a charity that was, that was started uh, over 10 years ago, but the way it's grown and, and, and sort of uh, expanded is, is, is just astronomical. Really. And Les, I know you run your own company, and this is a this is a role that you are passionate about as well. Um, what made you want to get involved with the Twenty Three Foundation? Well, Mike and I had been on um, on LFC TV, and that's kind of where we were um, introduced. To let you on LFC TV, <laughs> <laughs> only the pundits. <laughs> <laughs> you started it. Um, no, so anyway, that's kind of how I first met Mike and. Uh, we kind of got chatting um, after that, and then obviously Mike had a uh, word with Jamie and they decided maybe to approach me to see if, if this was something we could actually take on board uh, in an ambassadorial role. So to actually bring uh, commerce and industry and say, well, look, maybe we could we can use someone who's got a, a business head around them to actually further develop in terms of the, the, the fundraising opportunities, but also um, the ability to actually help other smaller organisations actually help themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Um, and Mike, then I think you know. Well, actually, one of the first things we did together was the firefighters thing from yeah. from last year, wasn't yeah. it? And that was a great collaboration between yeah. two organisations, yeah. mm -hmm. both raising money. Great night was had. We live streamed the event, if you remember, yeah. on YouTube. Uh, we had some great traction with that, some great support, hopefully as well. And mm -hmm. you know, a, a charity that should be close to everybody's hearts, really, because these guys do unbelievable work in each and every community up and down the country, don't they, Les? Mm -hmm. But you know, wh why is it that you? Are passionate about this because I know how much time you put into this as, as well as you're running your own business. Well, I mean, obviously there's an LFC uh, connected. I've been a season ticket holder since 1984. Jamie, I suppose, being a local lad and uh, always having the, uh, the, the, that passion in his football has actually continued through to the, the 23 Foundation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're passionate about something, no matter what it is, it means you're really, you know, it, it's something you're going to give 100%. And Mike, how, how, what is it you're striving to achieve with the 23 Foundation? Um, quite simply to help as many people as we can. Um, you know, we're living in a very uncertain time at the moment where, you know, there's a lot of poverty, uh, you know, in the inner cities. Uh, and the same can be said of, of all continents. I mean, we work with um, the Canadian Reds in Edmonton, for instance. Um, they, they have sick children in their community, so uh, the fact that they purchased items from us in the past uh, only enhances our, our link with them. We work with Chicago Reds, we work with, with Reds in Australia, Dubai, Croatia, 
Norway, we've got fantastic support from Norway. I mean, half of our income comes from Norway. Wow. Uh, 50,000 supporters out there, um, uh, and, and they belong to over, over 100 what they call live birds clubs. Uh, and the thing, thing about these Norwegians that come to, to Anfield every week, they are passionate about Liverpool, but they also want to help charities. Mm. And uh, they come and buy, you know, Jim, Jamie Carragher shirts from us, Stephen Gerrard shirts, but they, they know it's real. So it's a, it's, a, it's a two-way thing, really. They want to support our charity. They want to buy an authentic signed shirt, which in some instances you can't buy on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> and Ian, am I allowed to come to you on what the mayor of Liverpool was saying about our Norwegian fans this week? Oh, it was interesting, wasn't it? Am yeah. we allowed to talk about that? Why not? I mean, this is, this is a man who... Had a Twitter meltdown on Sunday evening after the derby being a blue. <laughs> having a go at people who are putting to be fair to Joel having like a people are, like a go at people who are putting money into our communities and not mm. some big frigging companies and the money's getting mm. farmed out somewhere else. Absolutely spot on. And I mean, it's so why you've just you've opened the subject about the Norwegians. Magnificent support they give your foundation, our mm. fan. You know what we do. I mean, the Man U game. They're giving us three thousand pounds. Uh, from the Oslo branch, I got another phone call yesterday, so there's another arm of the Norwegian supporters group. They want to donate a thousand pounds. So these, as you say, they're coming into yeah. the uh, community. Yeah. They're, 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 obviously, they're watching the football because they're passionate about the football, but they want to give something back to the yeah. community, and very that's absolutely you know, world yes, class. And it's not just Norwegians, I've had a phone call this morning off. German supporter branch, they want to donate a thousand pounds. The Danish lad, if you remember the Danish lad come over, uh, and I took him to the Aldi, and we got him 400 nickers worth of food, and he done that collection mm -hmm. on the week he's mm -hmm. now got another three grand so these are people yeah. Liverpool yeah. fans from across yeah. Europe aren't they yeah. who just want to give something back so I think you know Joe, uh, Joe needs to reflect on uh, his bitterness <laughs> overcoming his, <laughs> his, his role as uh, a yeah, mayor yeah. of the city how did how did you two organisations start to work together I tell you what it was we met at the United building yeah yeah we were introduced by Roy yeah, Roy, Roy Bentham, yeah. The, the legend from his village to Shankly. Yeah. yeah, that one who always wears the cravat. Yeah, uh, <laughs> what it was was I think he was talking about food banks and this, that, and the other. And I said, well, you know what? I run a logistics company and we deal with a lot of different uh, types of, um, of, 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 of manufacturers that might be able to help. Why don't you guys mm. get, us, why don't Roy get us introduced? And he set up the meeting yeah. and we went there and I said, listen, you could have 10 people bring in 10 bags of food, which is fantastic. And a prime example, you know, we were just chatting before we come on uh, on air here about something which happened you know, this week. We were at um, we were at Jacob's Crackers. We got Jamie there. We did a presentation to the canteen, and um, we loaded a van full of uh, a van full of food. It was a fantastic um, opportunity. But just in, just in the last two hours, um, Typhoon have come on board and said, "Listen, we've got two full pallets of um, of, of of tea bags." So I've just told about that Ian, and then our warehouse um, in in Warrington have come on to listen. This letter of indemnity that you've, you've you've talked about, which indemnifies manufacturers against their prop their 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 goods being sold elsewhere, let's say through a, a Sunday market or whatever, we guarantee that that won't happen, and that then gives them that legal guarantee that they require to actually uh, to, uh, to, uh, to 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 donate. Full pallet worth of food stuff, which we can then pass on to mm. fan support and food banks. See, what, we, what we've always said is, we, we'll take anything off anyone because we've got distribution networks around the city which we built up. And there's a, a spot on some stuff going in landfill. Well, we're saying, give it to us, and we'll put it out. You know, throughout all our networks, you know, school nurseries. Uh, we just give it right across all the food banks, and we built that up over the last uh, over the last three years. So. Trust the spot on because obviously Les has got a reputation mm. business wise, uh, you know. So he's linked in with us, and you know, <laughs> he took some bottle that by the way doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what we've what we've done is we've got an example is like the thirty five thousand pounds worth of Jaffa cakes which was going to go in the bin, and we you know we'll take them and we distribute them right across the northwest, food banks, uh, schools, uh, but it went right across. So. What Les gives us, and that, and other corporations, but mainly Les has been there for and the 23 Foundation, is that in with Typhoon, uh, mm -hmm. where the, it's usually important what we do on a, on a, on a match day because they galvanise the community. Mm -hmm. So we even give someone giving one tin is exactly the same as someone giving 20,000 boxes of uh, Typhoon tea bags. It's what you can give, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. But, it's, a, it's an old fable. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely spot on. But 
obviously at this time of crisis, as you alluded to before, Mike, you know, there's a, there's a humanitarian crisis, so we can get two pallets of uh, tea bags off Les, but that'll go, that won't half help the food banks. And the whole idea of fans supporting food banks is just, it's a simple ethos, really. We just ask the football fans and the football family to get as much food as we can to stock these shelves. 2018, you shouldn't have to be doing this, hope your viewers appreciate that. It's, it's a disgraceful uh, political decision that's being made, which is austerity. Uh, and that's what's affecting our communities now. So that, uh, ally, so I say, all our focus has ever been is just to try and get as much food in as we can. Uh, what's what's changed over the last few years? Has, has it increased? Massively. And, and, and why is that, Ian? Because I think from you know, austerity kicked in 2010, and then it, it took it took them years, hasn't it, to really infiltrate into communities across the country. And we can see that it is across the country. But the spread of fan support and food banks right across the country. We had Newcastle here last night at Goodison. They were given food. So what has happened is you know the the, the changes to the welfare system have gradually been implemented. Twenty changes uh, since 2010, and that's like an accumulative effect now obviously allied to what's happened with universal credit. And also you've got to talk about job market, casualised labour, zero yeah. hour contracts. Just, just not that certainty when we were growing up as kids. Mm. You went into a job, you normally, you, you're an apprentice, you got 35 hours, you could, you could you could actually plan your life, what you want to do. You could buy your house. You could, you could, you could move, start a family. Huge swathes of uh, industry now, and you know we're looking at camel heads on strike over the over the water at the moment. Mm. That's the casualisation of the labour market. That's what it's tend to do. Bring agency workers in. No one's got any certainty anymore. People are working job four market. jobs because they've yeah. got three zero hour contracts. It's like and they're turning up for work and they're being told that they're not needed today. Absolutely, mm. and that's that's the type of environment that's that has been built over the last uh, you know. Say twenty, you can say synthetic, aren't you? But where we are now is we seem to have reached a tipping point, where you know with with, with austerity and with this ca uh, casualisation of the labour market, people are just well they're in despair, aren't they? You know we can we can see it. I you know as a councillor in Everton, I'm getting horrendous stories coming through my surgery. People with no electricity, no food, absolutely nothing. And, and these aren't all people without jobs, are they? I think that needs 60%. to be made clear. Sixty percent are in in work, so it's in work poverty. The yeah. class has been in work, but like you just said before, they're not getting enough hours or the hours what they're getting. It's not. We're going paying. back to 30, 40 years oh, ago. We're going aren't back. We? We're going Fair back then. to Victorian ages. That that's what it feels like. We've gone. We've gone mm. back. You know, we we we've gone back to where where people, as you said, were standing in pens on the side of the media, getting pointed out to that to have work, and the ones that didn't get work had to walk back to the families, yeah. and, and say, "Well, there's nothing. There's nothing there to eat." And I think it, it it's a real tipping point in society where we are now. And I think what what you do, what we do, and I've said this before. I hate the thought that there's a normalisation of poverty because, mm. and food banks especially, because no, we shouldn't have to be doing this. But I've had an argument with a couple of prominent politicians in the Boozer in Blackpool the other week, and it was about, he said, you're normalising food banks. And I said, well, if we don't, if we don't collect the food, what we're collecting, 25% of all food now is coming to the football fans. Also, probably more now because what Les is bringing in as well. So, you, I mean, you know, two pallets on Monday. What can our viewers and, and people who watch Redmen TV, how can they help the 23 Foundation first and foremost? Well, I'd rather Mike answer that one because it's not just about, you know, uh, the, the, the little things that... Uh, I think I think the best way that your viewers can support our foundation really is there's, there's two elements. First of all, if they go on our website, uh, www.jamiecarragher.org, it's very, very um, in, information Packed, uh, in terms of uh, transparency uh, so who do we support and where so we are very transparent we are a non-profit making organization the funds that come in are turned around and given back to um, the communities and, and good projects um, so if they go in our shop they can buy anything from any player between uh, 1960 right through to the Jurgen Klopp sign montage and they're not expensive, and all the profits go to our charity. Mm -hmm. Now, one one really good example, Ian mentioned working, you know, effectively in the community. If I can just mention one example to you. Um, do you remember a footballer called Stephen Darby? Yeah, he's, he's a right back, wasn't he? Yeah, he's very ill at the moment. Yeah. He's got motor neuron disease, and uh, his family contacted us. And we're trying to raise the awareness of that, that horrible disease that... Um, it's a, uh, it's a horrible disease, 
And you know, we've been in in, uh, in constant um, sort of touch with various clubs, but Leeds United supporters, Bradford City fans, Huddersfield fans, um, even Bolton fans that where where Stephen Darby is at the moment. They've been in touch, and next year they're going to be. There's going to be a number of events where we're going to be raising funds for Stephen Darby's charity and awareness of and, and awareness of, of that. So that's just one example where Jamie's going to get involved. Um, but also, um, you know, your viewers need to know that, that we also support the armed forces. Um, we've got um, uh, sort of links with, with with the armed forces, and also we, we support the police in terms of when, when they when they have charity auctions, they need. You know the, the 23 Foundation to support them with our very very rare memorabilia. And Ian, you know, before we before we get onto how we can obviously help the fan support and food bank stuff, something personally that I've heard a lot of over over the last sort of couple of months is Universal Credit. Can you explain to me what this is doing to our communities? Well, I think that the key points about Universal Credit was brought in to simplify the benefit system, and uh, it, it it certainly hasn't done that. So it's just been rolled out uh, fully in Liverpool. And the, the crux of it is, it's the it's the it's the delay. So it's a five week delay from when you sign on to when you get your first payment, and that's what's causing huge issues in our community. You can, we can talk about the cumulative, uh, cumulative impact of the benefits uh, cuts and and way that's been gone into the universal credit. So a lot of people were switching over are actually on less money, which is causing huge uh, issues. But it's the five week delay which is the worry. That's why we've done the uh, Universal Credit Derby, and that's why we did the week proceedings to try and get the food banks full, because Trust of Trust told us, they had a meeting with us, and he said, you need to up your donations by 100%. Looking across the country, when there's been a full rollout of Universal Credit, there's been a 51% spike in food bank usage. And that'll be that five weeks, you know, when people are, are gone without. It's like getting a new job and not getting paid until the end of your second yeah. month. Yeah. It's absolutely, but these are coming from, the, a lot of them are coming from the benefit system, yeah. so they haven't got any savings. Yeah. There's nothing in the bank to, like, give you that five weeks. So some bod in Whitehall, you know, Ian Duncan Smith says, this is great, let's condition people for work. But they haven't thought about the Do real life. they ever life. get that back out no. of interest? Or is that, there's a saving across no. everybody who's on credit over yeah. the entire country who have essentially missed five weeks' For pay. that five weeks? No, no, that's the conditionality of the of So the, how much have they made service. there? <laughs> I, I, it's an interesting <laughs> question. Maybe a Freedom Information Act needs to go in <laughs> and find out. But that's what's causing yeah. the huge issues. And obviously... You know, you can say it was a vindictive move by the government. We certainly can't accuse the Conservatives of being vindictive, can we? <laughs> Having that roll out on the 5th of December, yeah. the five-week period over the Christmas, New Year, people have got children, people, you know, you've got families. The kids won't know what's happening, will they? There'll be no money in the tank, and that's where the spike, that's where the, the, you know, the spike in the food bank users uh, happens. And that was the whole thought process behind, it, obviously, what we tried to do for the derby. And it was a, it was magnificent, to be honest, because we got obviously we got Joe Anderson to open up all the council facilities, 61 buildings. So a lot of people are interested in the fan support and food banks, what we're up to. We said, well, you've got the opportunity now to actually, you know, donate right across the country. So from like Speak to, you know, Bootle, there was an opportunity for people to donate into libraries. So that's getting collected today or today and tomorrow. So we'll have an, under, we'll have an understanding of actually how much is collected within them. The match was off the scale. We've never had, you, you were down there. We've never had the, the, the van that Peter Moore's kindly bought us four weeks ago. It was it was like doing wheelies. It was that heavy. Uh, Didn't I've you never, say it was never, It was two tonne. It was two tonne, yeah. yeah and and at be... the end, we had to store stuff in Liverpool's uh, in the ground yeah. because wow. we just couldn't well, take any more. So that is a huge tribute to the football fans that turned out Liverpool and Everton, by the way, it was both. And, yeah. bold. and football fans supporting food banks is a joint collective. A as joint well, collective, it? yeah, it's a joint venture. It's uh, Liverpool and Everton. So I was at Goodison for my sins last night, uh, last in Dan Bain, uh, and we were collecting last night. And it, it, that's that's. I think that's the real special elements of it. And Les will probably get. It's well, bringing this whole of the city together. Do you know what? The um, what, 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 what? What? There's a number of uh, officers in our building. So what I did was I went to the building owner and I went, listen. How about we have a monthly collection? Everyone just brings in, you know, whatever, whatever they and can. And these little things that can add up over time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, because absolutely. obviously there's, there's there's an imminent five week gap which needs to be plugged, but then there's a much a, a longer term sort of thing. So you know, if every office had once a month and then you 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 you, 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 you pool these sort of resources together, then all of a sudden you can actually, if you need to, you can then stagger them collections so that yeah, you've got yeah. a, a constant supply Extreme, of yeah. different products, could, and so absolutely. therefore, you know. Um, 
I think if you if you're uh, you work in an office building or whatever, or you work in a factory, whatever, you know, why not? Why not get together, nominate someone as as the charitable coordinator, and we'll publicly we'll thank you so that you're actually getting recognition uh, for that. And bear in mind that you're helping the most vulnerable in society. And that's so it. that's a big message, isn't uh, it? Uh, and Ian, so so anyone watching this show now. What can we do to help fans support and food banks as well? We've obviously spoken to them about the tweet. No, I've just, just uh, donated. You know, go come to the match, uh, see us uh, at the donation points. We're always behind uh, in the van uh, in the Annie Road end. So just come up, have a chat, make a donation. One tin, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter what you bring as long as you bring something, which was uh, which was shown on Saturday, uh, Sunday, sorry, because we were just getting like people come yeah. up and just one tin. Yeah. And, and you know, well, you know, if you get but it's what you can yeah. afford to give. But isn't it's it? what you can afford to give, and, and the idea was always, sorry, Les, is that you know, sixty thousand uh, scousers, uh, scousers, I can't see that. Sixty thousand Liverpool fans go to game. Yeah. Uh, Forty-five thousand across the park, and then you know, potentially that could be an absolute game changer for the food banks because this this come about because we've seen how uh, ill-resourced the food banks were because it was all done on donations. It, it was a couple of things though as well. I've got to say this: football fans are much maligned. Mm. They're a much maligned species. Now, you see seeing football fans come from up, Norway. One of our biggest contributions we get is from the LFC London. They come with bin bags every week. These are coming from outside, obviously, coming into our community. And the idea was to galvanise communities, galvanise people. We can go, we go to the you know, national uh, meetings now with the uh, Premier League. We know all the people in that room. Obviously, we're working with them with the food bank. So... Initially, there might be a bit of suspicion about opposition fans mm. coming together, and that's where you get results on ticket prices. It's it's really that collective spirit. The yeah. city come together of a week, uh, come together at the weekend, which is wonderful to see, and you know, long may that continue. So, if you're watching this and you're wondering what about football, uh, fan sport, food banks is about, come up and have a natter with us. We'd be delighted to uh, go talk to you about it. But also, just one donation. That's all we need. Well, conversely. If you're, a, if you're a manufacturer <clears throat> or you're in an office, whatever, yeah. and you think, right, okay, if you, if, if you look on, on Twitter at 23 Foundation Les, contact us, Les, yeah. and then what we'll do is we'll see what we can do for you to repay that, that kindness and generosity yeah. of spirit and obviously of food as well. So uh, you crack on, we need the help. I've, I've seen it first hand. He, he, I reckon he'd be incredible at chess because he's got pieces <laughs> all over the board. Like. <laughs> Um, but now, gents, it's been an, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for all that you do for our communities fantastic. and stuff. Jeez, it really is uh, fantastic. I really appreciate you coming down. I've broken my microphone. We're all right. Um, so there you go. That's one way to to end the show, isn't it? A broken microphone. If anyone's got a, a microphone to donate to us, uh, as well as supporting fan support and food banks and the Twenty Three Foundation, then please do it. Uh, don't forget to get involved. I'll put links to the Twenty Three Foundation. I'll put links to Les's Twitter and and to fan support and food banks in the video description as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video. Please let us know your thoughts, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Redman TV.